Okay, in our um, last example, um, we're given this these instructions. Just sketch the graph of uh, that equation. Uh, so those instructions are uh, pretty short, um, and we really wouldn't have a very good chance of uh, uh, making a good graph of this equation unless we uh, had some idea of what curve uh, to expect um, when we draw the graph, um, because this equation is just too complicated uh, to graph uh, otherwise. Um, However, it looks like, um, at first glance, that this uh, might be the equation for a translated circle. Uh, that is a circle uh, where the center uh, of the circle has been translated um, uh, from the origin. Um, but that's not quite the case, because um, uh, in the equation for a circle, um, although we do have uh, x squared and uh, y squared terms uh, in the equation for a circle, um, the coefficients of the x squared and y squared terms in the equation for a circle must be 1. And here you can see, of course, the coefficients are um, not 1. Uh, so that means this is not, uh, the graph of this equation will not be a circle, but um, it is actually going to be closely related to a circle. It's, in fact, an ellipse. Uh, and I'm uh, going to um, try to explain to you why that's the case. Uh, right now. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead uh, uh, though and start as though this were a circle um, because um, I'm going to transform uh, this equation uh, into a slightly different form. So let me rewrite it here. Um, and what I'm going to do is complete the square on um, these x terms and uh, on these y terms uh, much as we would uh, if we were uh, trying to uh, uh, determine the center of a circle uh, and graph a circle. So uh, to complete the squares on these uh, x terms, I'm going to have to first factor out uh, 9 from those two terms. So that factors out easily. And uh, same thing in completing uh, the square on the y terms. I'm going to start by factoring a 4 uh, from those uh, two terms. Forgot to write 11 here. And now uh, to complete the square uh, on uh, x squared plus 2x, uh, it's very easy to complete the square on that. It turns out um, if you calculate that third term uh, of that perfect square, Again, by dividing uh, this coefficient of x uh, by 2 and then squaring it, uh, it turns out that that third term is 1. And then uh, in completing uh, the square on these two y terms, turns out that that uh, uh, third term is going to be um, 4. All right, now, so we've added something to... Um, uh, both sides of the equation, of course. Um, we've added, uh, 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 it appears to be 1 and 4 uh, to the left-hand side of the equation, but remember this uh, uh, 1 is multiplied by this uh, uh, coefficient of 9 outside, uh, this factor of 9 outside the parentheses, and this 4 is, at, is multiplied by this uh, coefficient 4, this factor 4. So what we've actually added to the uh, left-hand side of the equation is 9, uh, plus 16, uh, 4 times 4, 9 times 1. So let's see. Uh, uh, here's what our equation is going to look like. We'll have um, 9 times x plus 1 uh, squared uh, plus 4 times uh, y minus 2 squared um, is equal to uh, 11 plus 9 uh, plus 16, which is uh, 36. <clears throat> and so um, that does look, again, uh, uh, like uh, an equation for a translated circle. Um, it would be a circle where the center would be at minus 1 and 2, right? Uh, but again, uh, in the equation for a translated circle, uh, these uh, uh, coefficients... Uh, that are multiplied by these perfect squares uh, must be um, 1. So this is not, in fact, uh, the equation um, of a circle.
okay? All right, um, now we're going to continue simplifying this uh, uh, a bit more, okay? And I'm going to do that by uh, dividing uh, uh, all the terms in this equation by uh, 36. So I'm going to divide this uh, first term on the left-hand side by 36, the second term on the left-hand side by 36, and of course uh, divide by 36 um, on the right-hand side as well. And when we do that, let me keep writing down here since I've run myself out of space, uh, we end up with um, just x plus 1 uh, squared over 4, because when you divide 9 uh, by 36, uh, you're going to get left with a 4 uh, in the denominator when you reduce. Uh, and then plus um, y uh, minus 2 uh, squared uh, divided by 9, because I'm dividing uh, 36 into 4. And of course, that's going to reduce to uh, 1 9th is equal to 36 divided by 36, uh, which is uh, 1. So again, I um, all I did here was divide all three terms in this um, equation by 36. And when you simplify that, um, here's what you end up with. And see, uh, this now looks very similar uh, to uh, the equation for uh, an ellipse, right? We have uh, this x squared uh, term uh, uh, divided by a quantity, this y squared term divided by a quantity equal to um, 1 on the uh, right-hand side of the equation. And this is, in fact, uh, the equation for an ellipse. It's just a, uh, not an ellipse that's centered at the origin. It's ellipse that's been translated. Um, and so here are the uh, general formulas for translated ellipses. So um, an ellipse uh, uh, that uh, whose major axis is uh, uh, parallel uh, to the x-axis and whose minor axis is uh, parallel to the um, uh, y-axis uh, will have an equation of this form where the hk here, uh, these constants uh, in these uh, uh, binomials uh, that we're squaring uh, uh, is the actually uh, gives you the center of the ellipse, the new center of the ellipse. So of course, if h were zero and k were zero, you would just have x squared over a squared uh, plus y squared over b squared equal one. And of course, that uh, is an equation for an ellipse centered at the origin. And of course, a, if a, h were zero and k were zero, then uh, the center would be uh, the origin. Uh, but if the center is translated uh, to new coordinates other than the origin. Uh, then uh, uh, the equation uh, uh, for the ellipse, again, will have a very similar form, uh, except uh, you'll uh, subtract h from uh, uh, x. h is the x-coordinate of the uh, a new center, and you would subtract k from y, where k is the y-coordinate uh, of the new center. And, um, and then likewise, uh, uh, you get a very similar equation if the uh, major axis is parallel to uh, the y-axis and the minor axis is parallel to the x-axis. In other words, the x is uh, elongated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the ellipse is elongated in the y direction uh, would give you um, a very similar equation. Again, the center here is going to be h comma k, except notice that uh, the uh, y-intercept, I'm sorry, uh, the major axis uh, 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 corresponds uh, to the y-axis and the minor axis corresponds to the x-axis. So let's see, um, in this equation, uh, since 9 is bigger than 4, then um, it's um, this sort of ellipse uh, that we're looking at uh, in this equation. The center is going to be um, not the origin, however. The center is going to be at minus 1 and 2. Uh, the a uh, value is going to be uh, 3. Well, a squared is 9, so a is going to be uh, 3, right? And the uh, b squared is 4, so uh, b is going to be uh, 2. So uh, what this tells us is that when we graph the ellipse, its center is at minus 1 and 2. 
but the major axis of the ellipse is parallel to the y-axis because the quantity uh, uh, in this uh, second term uh, was bigger than uh, this denominator of the second term was bigger than the denominator um, of the first term. Nine is bigger than four. And um, uh, so the major axis will be parallel to the y-axis and the minor axis will be parallel uh, sorry, the minor axis will be parallel to the x-axis. So let's see, uh, with an a value of 3, we just count up 3 units from our center, and that gives us one of the uh, vertices of the ellipse, and then we count down 3 units from the center, so that gives us the second vertex of the ellipse. And then to find uh, the endpoints of the minor axis, since we have a b value of 2, we simply move over 2 units from the center, to the left or the right, and those would be the endpoints of uh, the minor axis. Did I draw that correctly? No, I didn't. Let's see, one, two, right there. So there's uh, one of the endpoints of the minor axis, and then all we have to do, of course, is connect these uh, points with a nice elliptical curve, and I'm not that great as drawing ellipses as y'all know by now okay uh, well for me that's not that bad okay so there is the uh, sketch of the graph um, of this ellipse all right again center at minus one two and we determined that by uh, using completing the square uh, much like we use the completing the square to find the center uh, of a circle